Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Beta Breakdown. We have version 40 coming out very soon with some interesting changes, some typical bug fixes, but some definite new stuff that I think you're going to want to know about if you are a follower of this channel, which you likely are. So let's take a look at that stuff. I don't think there will be too much to cover, but we'll make sure we look at everything and give some insight and perspective and see where we land with that. So if you haven't tried Gems and Legends yet, come check it out and play alongside me. It's another really fun and deep strategy RPG like Empires and Puzzles, but with some fun new twists, and a lot of people from Empires and Puzzles have already joined. Not only can you help out the channel by using the download link in the description of this video, but if you enter the code hashtag Spock underscore 2021 hashtag in the global chat, you can get a nice starter bonus including gold, gems, gold scrolls, and a free epic hero Elidor, all valued at about 50 bucks. Once you join, you'll also get access to a set of beginner events where you can earn another epic hero, Soliana, a five-star legendary set of equipment, which is what you use to boost the stats and performance of your heroes, and a platinum scroll for another epic or legendary hero in the game. Now, those links and codes are in the description down below. Just be sure to enter that code in the global chat after finishing the tutorial within 24 hours of downloading the game, and I look forward to seeing you all there. All right, so it looks like the version 40 has already started rolling out. Uh, they usually do Android first and then iOS. So this should be coming within the next. I imagine we'll see a forced update within about um, two days of when this video is posted, probably. So starting up first, content for new challenge event added. So very soon in August, the Slayers of Fell Shadows is coming. Uh, if you haven't checked that video out where I cover those heroes. There should be a link in the description of this video um, explaining what's going on there. It's a totally new mechanic and has the potential to be, as you might expect, extremely powerful as all the new event heroes seem to be. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure you check it out because I'm not going to cover that in this video here. Um, but that will be coming very soon. So probably within a month, we will see this new event and who knows if that means they're going to be retiring older events because we're getting a very full calendar quickly. And I don't know if they want it to be the kind of thing where each one happens once a year. And so that scarcity mindset of you only get one chance, uh, kind of like the seasonal summons. Um, I don't know if that's what they're going for. It's all speculation, so I won't push it past that point. Um, but we'll see what's going to happen with all these events. So they're adding a new mechanic to this event, um, or a new effect, they're calling it an event effect. Rage. Each time an item or special skill is used, the rage of the enemies grows. The higher the rage, the higher their damage. As long as rage is full, damage dealt by heroes and battle items is reduced. All enemies' status ailments are also cleansed at the beginning of their turn. That has the potential to have a big impact on people going for higher event scores. So this will probably come out as a 10 stage event um, as the new ones have and they've talked about in that Q&A video where we looked at the Q&A with the development team. They talked about how that would kind of be their preferred method but to go back and balance all the stages would take more time than they're willing to put in at this point. Um, but yeah, battle items are a huge part of scoring high in the events and that could mean that damage is reduced the more you use them. So this will shake up the challenge event meta, which is not something that I'm very involved in. Um, but if you are, keep that in mind because this will be definitely different. Also, if it's a tougher level where you can't just blow through it uh, without the bosses attacking, then their damage could be increased. So the Slayer family is coming with that. I forget exactly how many heroes there are, but probably at least five star, at least five five star heroes. So the way that they worked is they were all slow, but they had chances of building these stacks uh, as turns carried on. It looks like they've brought these down to a more reasonable level, so we'll see how that turns out, but still quite strong. Um, I guess it depends where the caps for these things are, but Slayer Heroes have a chance to receive the following stacks at the end of each turn. Rare, Epic, and Legendary get 5, 10, or 10 HP each turn. Uh, hero gets plus 5% mana generation. I can't remember. I think it was 10% before, if I remember correctly. It's been uh, maybe a month since I've done that video, so I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think it was 10, um, which meant that after 
um, about 10 turns, they were going to be 100% faster, which would mean that, uh, you know, their mana generation was plus 100%. So a slow hero charging at 12 tiles was now a very fast hero. Um, the family bonus, from what I recall, maybe they altered this, but what it was before is that they, the more heroes you had on your team, the higher the chance of gaining a stack. It seems like they've opted for guaranteed stacks, perhaps, um, but reducing the overall stack count, which I think is a better change. Because if this is capped at 10, uh, you know, 50% 10 times, basically, uh, that means after 10 turns, you have plus 50% mono generation. So that means all slow heroes are becoming functionally fast after 10 turns. So we'll see how that pans out. They're definitely going to be strong heroes. Um, and from what I recall, they have like two part specials as well. Now I'm thinking of the magic heroes there. Getting my wires crossed here. Um, Slayer heroes receive bonuses when used in the Slayers of Fell Shadows event. Stat bonus and bypassing the element shield so you're not as constrained by the color of the quest uh, and you get a nice stat boost so more incentive to pull heroes um, again not really my thing to compete in the events but just something to keep in mind so some of these are more minor we'll go through these as well um, and this will be a quicker video than normal you can see there's only a few other changes here so fix the visual issue where the oni curse icon would turn white for a hero that was killed while the curse killed while had the curse timer on and was resurrected um as a draugr seems like a very niche thing improve the description of the status effect mindless attack that's pretty interesting i think that covers the idea i'm guessing that um it replaces the special skill with mindless attack because people would use lord loki on someone affected by mindless attack and would be like what the heck he just hit himself and that's because mindless attack actually alters the special skill so maybe that they they added something to reflect that. Improve the description of crafting missions in the Path of Valor. Now they say craft and collect to better reflect the mission completion criteria um, because you didn't just have to craft them, you had to craft them and then collect them. Improve the limit break tutorial. Uh, probably everyone at this point has gone through that. Improve the description of all heroes that cast stacks, Meyer Weave and Yang Mai. That will be interesting to see what they change there. I like how they are clarifying these things long term and like they're using the term cleanse for removing ailments as opposed to dispel for removing buffs and they've altered some of the descriptions over time to be more consistent with that and I like that they are trying to be consistent and clear within their system. Fix an issue where limit break quests team edit reset players preset map and quest teams to team one. I think I experienced this where it would just throw off what your default team was. Fix an issue where abyss gems would break suspicious chest enemies, turn counter, okay, so pretty niche. Fix an issue where guardian gazelles dance of spirits did not trigger mythic titan Hades to gain stacks, so that was the hero that got reduced damage every time you used an attack buff up to three stacks, and gazelle kind of had a, a uh, backdoor there where that didn't affect her because of her special, they fixed that. This is the one I'm most excited about. Added raid battle result, results showing the team that attacked the player. The enemy attack team can be seen in the raid log of the watchtower and in the enemy raid dialogue that appears after a player logs on. Very, very, very cool to be able to see what teams are taking on your defense. Could give us more ideas of synergies. I'm hoping it doesn't have the impact of people calling for more nerfs because they're you know, now seeing who's attacking them. It used to be that heroes that only that excelled mostly on offense were like safe from public outcry because no one knew who was being used. I don't, you know, from what they talked about in the Q&A, I don't think that they really pay attention to the outcry very much in terms of nerfing heroes. I think they look at their own data. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. It's there is that lingering um, suspicion, but I don't it's not any more um, grounded than just a suspicion. But the cool side is it'll be nice to see who attacked your team and what they're using, and that might give some synergy ideas and uh, enrich the game a little bit. Um, fixed an issue where Theobald was dealing damage to the enemy with the highest remaining HP, even though the enemy team was protected by taunt. So typical bug stuff when they introduced a new mechanic like they did for these circus heroes. Um, 
stuff like this just has to get ironed out based on the way that their um, system is working. Fix an issue where the costume portal displayed new, although there were no new costumes. Fix an issue where players purchased... Fixed an issue where players who purchased last season's Elite Valor Pass could not change their avatars in the end of the next... Excuse me. Could not change their avatars in the next Path of Valor season, which is pretty funny. You buy the super expensive one and then you get stuck with the avatar that you might want to change. Fix an issue where fiends could be cast on suspicious chest enemies being in a shielded state. So a lot of challenge event stuff, a lot of pretty minor stuff. The big one there for me was the... Um, raid battle results. I hope they improve that even more to see like which heroes did the most damage. Like Gemstone Legends, for example, will show you um, how much a given hero healed or how much any any hero was healed, how much damage they dealt and other metrics like that, which is pretty cool to see because then you're not just looking at the team trying to imagine. You can kind of get a glimpse of what the synergy was and who was dominating and then... Um, Gives you a better idea on how to approach the game yourself. So hopefully we see more stuff like that in the future. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope this information was valuable to you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments about any of these changes, whether you think they're good or bad. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video.